It's good to have everyone here with us today. A couple of brief announcements before uh, Mass starts. We invite you to do some shopping for our friends at the Wednesday night suppers. We have a convenient shopping list inside the front cover of your worship aid for you to take home with you. Please help us and bring your purchased items to Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, oh my goodness, yes, Thanksgiving Day Mass <laughs> at 10 a.m. or our uh, Sunday Masses next weekend. Thank you. Today, there is a second collection for the Catholic Campaign for Human Development. Thank you in advance for your generosity. Uh, do we have any visitors that we can welcome this morning? Hi! Good to have you all here. Welcome. Well, let us all stand and greet one another as we begin our celebration.
welcome. The church welcomes Angelica and Ernesto, and what name do you give your child? And what do you ask of God's church for Ernesto? You've asked to have your child baptized, and in doing so, you're accepting the responsibility of training him in the practice of the faith. It will be your duty to bring him up to keep God's commandments, as Christ taught us, by loving God and loving neighbor. You clearly understand what you're undertaking. Patty and Patrick are the godparents. As godparents of Ernesto, are you ready to help Angelica and Ernesto in their loving duties and sacred vocation as Christian parents? People of Most Holy Redeemer, are you ready to help Angelica and Ernesto in their loving duties as a sacred vocation as Christian parents? Yes. yes. My dear Ernesto, the Christian community welcomes you with great joy in its name. Oh, that's all right, I'll follow that. <laughs> I claim you for Christ our Savior by tracing the sign of the cross upon your forehead. I invite your parents and godparents to do the same. Just trace the sign of the cross. Now let us give praise and thanks to God as we raise our voices to give glory and praise.
celebrate the great life God has given to Ernesto. We're also very mindful this morning of the loss of life last night in Colorado Springs when five people were killed at the LGBTQ club there. We're mindful of those who have died, the victims who are clinging to life in the hospital. And on this National Day of Transgender Remembrance, remembrance of transgender people who have been killed by violence, let our prayer this morning rise to the heavens for the victims, but also for an end to all violence. Almighty and ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole creation, set free from the slavery of sin, may render your majesty service and ceaselessly, ceaselessly proclaim your praise to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. In those days, all the tribes of Israel came to David in Hebron and said, Here we are, your bone and your flesh. In days past when Saul was our king, it was you who led the Israelites out and brought them back. And the Lord said to you, You shall shepherd my people Israel and shall be commander of Israel. When all the elders of Israel came to David in Hebron, King David made an agreement with them there before the Lord. And they anointed him king of Israel. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, let us give thanks to the Father who has made you fit to share in the inheritance of the Holy Ones in light. He delivered us from the power of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of our sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him we, for in him were created all things in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the church, head of the body. He is the beginning the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he himself might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things for him, making peace by the blood of his cross, through him, whether those on earth or in heaven. The word of the Lord. From the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The rulers sneered at Jesus and said, He saved others, let him save himself. For as if he is the chosen one, the Christ of God, and even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, If you're the king of the Jews, save yourself. 
Above him there was an inscription that read, This is the King of the Jews. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuked him and said in reply, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, we have been condemned justly, for the sentence we receive corresponds to our crime. But this man, this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This story in the gospel about the good thief we call him or the penitent thief or the Saint Dismas as he's been called brings to mind a story of a person who became a good friend, Michael Hustad spent most of his life in prison. I met him more than 30 years ago, about 30 years ago when a good friend, Sister Elizabeth, who was an adorer of the blood of Christ, would visit Michael in prison. And she would share with Michael the books I'd written and the articles. And she uh, asked Michael to become a lay associate of, his, of her community, which she did. The adorers of the blood of Christ are kind of the sister community to my community, the missionaries of the blood of Christ. And Michael and I started a correspondence. He would share things he read in the books and articles, and I would I would uh, re reply and write him, and we would share, and he would share his writings with me. And I was living in the Midwest then, and so when I had conferences or retreats or workshops in Oklahoma City or, or Wichita, I would often visit Michael in prison. And when I visited him the first time, he said, uh, this was long before GPS, he said, you found me. And I said, well, you sent good directions. But he kind of felt like the lost sheep, you know, and yet, in my life, I've met very few people whose faith had been forged by so much suffering. He had many careers in prison. He learned the art of stained glass. He would make uh, beautiful crosses and, and, and angels of peace that you could hang in the window to reflect the light. When a new warden came in and kind of shut down that hobby of stained glass making, he uh, started training service dogs. And the prison there in Oklahoma became kind of famous for training service animals. And in fact, I think he was featured on a, one of those Animal Planet cable TV shows. He led Bible studies in prison and journeyed with many of his fellow inmates in the conversion process. And part of his ministry in prison was to begin visiting prisoners who were in the infirmary. I mean, within the prison system, these were the people who were most left out, the people who were most abandoned, the people who were on the, the, the total outcasts who had no one else to visit them. And his goal, he wrote it to me once, is to help them come to understand that while their families may have abandoned them, God never will. Michael was a model prisoner. He came up for parole many times. I wrote letters, many people wrote letters of support for him, but every time he was denied. And then on October 20th, 2005, I received a letter from Michael telling me that he had been diagnosed with esophagus, cancer of the esophagus. And though in the letter he sounded upbeat that this was gonna, he was gonna beat this cancer, it was in its earliest stages, he had several treatments and scans. And the interesting thing to me was that the first time he was able to leave the prison in all the years he was incarcerated were those times he would go to the cancer hospital to have either chemotherapy or, or scans. And he told me in his letter how his diagnosis with this cancer gave him a new understanding of hospice ministry. He said, you know, I spend most of my time with those who are in pain and suffering 
in their individual journeys, but I always did it from a stance of sympathy. I, was, I felt sorry for them. But now I'm one of them, he said. Now I heard the news, you have cancer, and I'm one of them. And so now I have empathy. I kind of understand what they're going through. I feel now what they're going through. Michael was actually scheduled to appear before the parole board in January of 2006. This time there was a good chance he might get parole because not only because of the cancer diagnosis, but because even the warden had said he was a model prisoner and he had you know, served his time. But Michael never made it to the parole board hearing. He died on December 14, 2005. And at the time of his, just before he died, as he was in the hospice wing of the hospital unit, his mother visited him. And she wrote me later that she cried because she said, Michael, you'll never experience freedom. And he said, Mom, since receiving the gift of faith, I've been free. I've experienced the freedom of being redeemed in the blood of Christ. I can hear Michael on his deathbed echoing the prayer of the crucify of that man crucified with Jesus. While the other criminal jeered at him, while the scribes and the Pharisees jeered at him, while the other people mocked him, hear this one person who also was experiencing tremendous suffering. There was nothing more humiliating or excruciating and painful as crucifixion. They were hung out to die on the edge of the city, on the outskirts of the city. There was nothing more humiliating for a faithful Jew than to be crucified outside the city of Jerusalem, among the abandoned, among the outcasts, among those who had lost all hope. And here was Jesus, Christ, the King, being crucified on what, as we know now, Golgotha was the garbage dump for the city of Jerusalem. And here this one person steps forward through the gift of faith to say the words I hope every one of us have etched on our lips and in our hearts on that moment when we take our last breath. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus had the power to say to him, oh, my friend, Today you will be with me in paradise. He had the power to say that because, as the second reading said, he is the firstborn of the dead. In him all fullness is pleased to dwell, and through him he is reconciled to God all things and has made peace through the blood of his cross. That has become a mantra for me in my community making peace through the blood of his cross. My friends, we woke this morning to more blood spilled by hatred, more blood poured out among people who are having a great time celebrating who they are. And because of the prejudice and hate of our world, blood is poured out in violence. We have a king, Christ the King, who stands with all those who have been abandoned, all those who have been ridiculed or oppressed because of who they are. We have a king who stands with and dies with those who die by violence. We have a king who is in complete solidarity with us on this journey of faith, from the moment of birth to the moment of death. Today we celebrate Ernesto's gift of faith that his parents so generously give to him. It is a faith that Michael found in prison after what he could not forgive himself of, a horrible crime that he had committed. But he knew through the gift of faith, God had forgiven him and he spent the rest of his life in prison working to help others receive the gift of faith, but also to comfort them in their sorrow, to be with them in their dying, to be with them in their abandonment. It is a poignant, prayerful plea. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. I think of how often that prayer is voiced every day in nursing homes, 
in hospitals where life is slowly slipping away? How many will voice that prayer in the streets, abandoned but people abandoned by society, people who will die tonight unloved and unmourned, and those who died last night in Colorado and those who are clinging to life today? It is the voice, the prayerful plea that comes from deep within, remember me, remember me. To remember someone confirms this person's life mattered. This person's life counted. This person's life is important. This person counts. Just as Michael Hustad's life counted after committing a terrible crime for which, as I said, he never forgave himself, he deeply believed that it was the power of the faith that we share today with Ernesto that gave him the courage to reach out to others, which is why I have no doubt that when Michael breathed his last, he heard the promise, today you will be with me in paradise. My friends, that is the promise we all yearn to hear. Ernesto, are you ready? The time has come for baptism. Almighty lover, lover living God, you sent your only Son into the world to cast out the power of evil, the power of sin, the power of Satan, and to rescue us from the kingdom of darkness and bring into splendor, us into the splendor of your light. We pray for Ernesto. Set him free from original sin. Make him a temple of your glory. Send the Holy Spirit to dwell among him, within him. I invite all of us to extend our hands over Ernesto to send forth the power of our blessing upon him as we welcome him into the community of faith. We turn now to ask our Lord Jesus Christ to look lovingly on Ernesto and on this day of his baptism, on his parents and godparents, and upon his entire family and his faith family, who in baptism welcomes you now into this community of faith. By the mystery of your death and resurrection, O God, we ask you to bathe this child in light as we celebrate his new life in baptism, and through baptism and confirmation, make Ernesto a faithful follower and witness to your gospel. Lead him by a holy life to the joys of God's kingdom. Make the lives of his parents and godparents examples of faith to inspire their child. And keep Ernesto's family always in your loving care. I now invite you to renew your own baptismal promises and as we renew our own baptismal promises, so dear Angela, Angelica and Ernesto, along with Ernesto's godparents, Patrick and Patty, you've come here to present your child Ernesto for baptism by water and the Holy Spirit. He is to receive the gift of life from God, new life from God who is love. On your part, you must make it your constant care to bring him up in the practice of the faith. See that the divine life which God has given him is kept safe from the poison of sin to grow always stronger in his heart, the love that you share with him. And if your faith makes you ready now to accept this responsibility, to renew your own vows of baptism, to reject sin, profess your faith in Christ Jesus, which is the faith of the church. And so this is the faith which your child is about to be baptized. So I ask you and all assembled here, do you reject Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of God? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. 
God, the all-powerful Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and forgiven our sins. May he always keep us faithful to our Lord Jesus Christ forever and ever. Amen. Angelica and Ernesto, Patty and Patrick, is it your will that your child be baptized in the faith of the church, which we've all professed with you? Let us come then to the water. Come, oh, come, come to the river flowing from the body of Christ. We'll go down deep in the water, but in the Lord we shall arise. Have no fear, the water's warm. <laughs> Ernesto, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son <laughs> and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. How was that like a shampoo? <laughs> Behold the sacred chrism, blessed by our bishop and given to us for the anointing of the newly baptized. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has freed you from sin and given you new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and welcomed you into this community of faith. He now appoints you with this chrism of salvation, as Christ was anointed priest, prophet, and king. So may you live always as a member of his holy body, sharing everlasting life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. He's kind of wearing a white garment. That's all right. Ernesto, you become a new creation in Christ. See in your white garment this outward sign of your Christian dignity with your family and friends to help you by word and example bring that dignity unleashed into an unstained, unleashed too, but unstained into the everlasting life of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now through the light. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the light which dispels the darkness of sin and death. We turn to you now asking that you would always be a light on the path for Ernesto's life and a path of all of our lives. Ernesto, receive the light of Christ. Dear Angelica and Ernesto, Godparents, Patty and Patrick, this light has been entrusted to you to keep burning brightly. This child of yours has been enlightened by Christ. He is to walk always as a child of light. May he keep the flame of faith alive in his heart. When the Lord comes, may he go to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us welcome our newest member of our family.
prayers of the faithful were actually part of the uh, baptismal rite, but I think given the circumstances of what we're experiencing in our world today and on this Feast of Christ the King, I think it's important that we also pray for the intentions we have in our book today. So would we please stand and, and uh, offer to God the prayers prayers that crowd our hearts. We pray for the church, for Pope Francis, and for all leaders of the Christian community, that they may be both effective leaders and wise shepherds of all God's people. Together, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For world leaders and for the miracles of collaboration, that they may come to see new paths toward peace, especially in Ukraine and other war-torn areas of the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. During this week, when people gather at tables of every kind to share a meal, we pray for farmers who grow the food that feeds our nation, for cooks who nourish us in body and in soul, for chefs, and for all who work in the service industry. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray for those who go hungry in the midst of a nation's wealth, for change that ensures human dignity, an end of all hunger, and the generosity to share the gifts God has freely given to us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all those participating in the global celebration of young people on this Christ the King Sunday, for all youth and young adults in our community, for the younger generations in our own families, and for those who remain distant from us, that they may all grow closer to Christ the King. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who are ill or in need of our prayers, especially Dean Katis, Eileen Gayton, Jamina Menkus, Christine Bartholomew, Juan Corrales, Father Pierce Leahy, Stephen Wakefield, Carlos Rodriguez. For all who suffer and for the families and loved ones who support and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who have died of, par died of parish friends or family, including William and Ellen Jane Adams, Roland Pierre, for all our ancestors who have gone before us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord and let us remember, especially this day, the victims of the violence in Colorado Springs last night, all those victims of violence, those who are clinging to life, for healing for them, for the families who grieve the loss of loved ones for violence, and for an end to violence, we pray to the Lord. Lord and let us also remember today on this day of remembrance for transgender, those who have experienced violence because of who they are. May those who perpetrate violence have a change of heart and see the light that each and every person is a child of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, hear the prayers of your family gathered here, the children sighing and crying throughout the world today where so much blood continues to be spilled. We ask, O oh Lord, that through your power of your love, you may help us make peace, to bring peace to your world, a peace that comes to us through Christ the Lord. Amen. Today, there's a second collection for the Catholic Campaign for Human Development. The baskets will be passed a second time, and we thank you in advance.
My sisters and brothers, would you please pray that these gifts be acceptable to our loving and gracious God. Indeed, may God accept this sacrifice from all of your holy and priestly hands. We remember especially Rolanda Pierre de Fay is the 20th anniversary of Stella's mother's death. So we remember her especially today in prayer and along with all of our intentions. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And, lift them up to the Lord. and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Truly right and just. Our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness as an eternal priest and King of all creation so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption. He has made all human creation subject to his rule, that he might present to God an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and peace, a kingdom of justice, love, and grace. And so with all the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory is without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore gracious God we humbly and implore you by the same spirit make holy these gifts that we bring to you for consecration that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we have become your beloved daughters and sons. For on the night he was betrayed, Jesus himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. He, again, again, he gave you thanks as he said the blessing. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, may be filled with his Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an everlasting gift to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Dismas and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O God, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith, hope, and love your pilgrim church on earth. Your servant Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, the order of bishops, clergy, religious, the entire people your son has gained for your own. And listen graciously to the prayers of this family that you've summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful God, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed sisters and brothers, to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow in the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty God, forever and ever. Beloved daughters and sons of God, we dare now to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to the us. Deliver us, O Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety, fear, or distress, as we await the joyful and blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom of the Father, and the glory of your now and ever. Lord Jesus Christ, when you appeared to the disciples, they were huddled in fear in that upper room. You showed them your wounds and breathed in them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. My peace I give you, my peace. I leave you. Look not at our sins or our fears or our failures, but look at our faith. It is the faith of your church. And graciously grant her the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And with your spirit. Before we come to the table, then, let us offer that peace to one another.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away our sin and the sin of all the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
You're invited to come downstairs after liturgy for the best little coffee hour in Christendom. But today is also birthday Sunday, and we do have a notable birthday this weekend, and that would be Michael Palma, who is celebrating a big one. You look great for 70. <laughs> Do we have any other birthdays this month here today? Diane? Yeah. Okay. Let's sing for them. we ask you, O Lord, that glorifying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. We now invite the Resto and Angelica and the godparents to come up again. Patrick and Pat, please come up to the front step here as we do our final blessing. Behind the camera, I don't know. Once again, I'd invite all of us to extend our hands as we ask God's blessing upon Angelica and Ernesto, who are so grateful for the gift that God has given them 
the gift of their son, Ernesto. Let us pray. May Almighty God bless you, Angelica and Ernesto. You will be the first teachers of your child in the ways of faith. May you be the best teacher, bearing witness to the faith by what you say and do. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God descend upon you, upon all you love, and upon us all. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God be with you and with all of you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Congratulations once again. Thank you. And thank you all for coming today and celebrating on this day of uh, Christ the King. May we truly build a kingdom of justice and peace, truth, and love in a world that is so filled with violence. Let us be those peacemakers. I hope you and your loved ones have a blessed Thanksgiving. Thank you for sharing this Thanksgiving table. Let us go in peace to love and serve Christ our King. Thanks be to God.